the advanced glaucoma intervention study or the ages the goal was to see uncontrolled medically primary open angle glaucoma should the patient have a laser or trabeculectomy as the next therapeutic intervention the goal of the study was to keep the patient pressure below 18 the second goal was to investigate the association between control of IOP after surgical intervention and the visual field deterioration. So this study is mainly a surgical intervention study. Candidate eyes should have IOP 18 or greater with field changes on a score between 1 to 16 from a score that ranges between 0 to 20. Zero means no defect and 20 at the end stage. So whenever we have a patient having a score between one and 16, he can be included in this study. One weak point of this study that eyes with low visual score are included. Eyes with visual field score of one or two can be included in such study. Inclusion criteria, age, glaucoma, tension. Patients are randomized into one of two arms, either to start by argon laser trabeculoplasty in the first arm or to start with trabeculectomy in the second arm. The supplement treatment can be given the goal to keep IOP below 18. If that was not enough, the first arm can be subjected to a trabeculectomy and if it was not enough, th another trabeculectomy can be done. The second arm, if th the first trabeculectomy was not enough, argon laser trabeculoplasty can be done, and if not enough, another trabeculectomy can be done. And always the goal to keep pressure below 18. To find the relationship between IOP and field progression, two analyses were done. First is the predictive analysis. The goal to find out is IOP during the early follow-up is predictive of subsequent change in the field of vision. The second analysis is the associative analysis the goal to find any relation between the level of IOP and field changes. For the first analysis, the predictive analysis, the first three visits, which took place once every six months, the pressure in these first three visits is average. So cases with the mean IOP in the first three visits below 14 are grouped together and the cases higher than 17.5 are grouped together and the remaining is in the middle group. So we have three groups. The first group where the IOP was low in the first three visits, mean of the three visits, and the last when the IOP was high. And this is the follow-up period and this is how the field changes are found in the high group the in the high pressure the field changes are more in the low pressure the field changes are less and in the middle is also in the middle so eyes in the lowest IOP group experience on average little visual field deterioration during the follow-up So there is a correlation between the initial IOP levels and the progression of the visual field. But we have to keep in mind the difference between mean and individual eyes. This study shows that some cases with low IOP showed progression. This is an individual base. But on an average, on a mean level, everything looks stable.
The three groups of the predictive analysis, the baseline patient's characteristics of the three group were almost similar, except for the age and diabetes. Patients with high IOP, that's the group higher than 17 and a half during the follow-up are on average younger and have higher prevalence of diabetes. The study also showed that the baseline IOP is weakly related to the post-intervention IOP. Now the associative analysis, during the follow-up period, patients were divided into four groups. In group A, 100% of the visits, the pressure was below 18. So group A is the patient that always the IOP was below 18. In group B, the pressure was below 18, somewhere between 75% and 100% of the visits. In group C, the pressure was below 18, between 50% to 70% of the visits, while in group D, the pressure below 18 was achieved somewhere between 0 and 50% of the visits. Now, this is the follow-up period, and this is the field changes of the four groups. As you can see, the group A, 100% of the visits below 18, the field looks stable, while group D, the field changes are high. And this is the mean pressure of the four groups. So the ages showed that sustained IOP reduction below 18 is correlated with the stability of the visual field. Eyes with IOP less than 18 in all the visits did not show any progression over their initial field defects. But again, keep in mind, this is a mean, not individual. This is the group that looks stable all the time. If you see here, after two years, 13.1% went worse by four units of the score, and 8.8% improved. So some of the cases worse, others improved, but the average is the same. After five years, 13.9% get worse, four units on the scale, and 13.9% improved four units on the scale. So the mean again is stable. After seven years, 14.4% worse, 18 improved, but on the whole, the whole group looks stable. So keep my in mind the difference between the mean and individual cases. Again, if you look to see the amount of deterioration of field after seven years compared to after two years. As you can see here, the changes are much, much apparent on the long run compared in the early stages. This shows that different effects on progression at different IOP levels may not appear until five years or later. So from this study, it is seen that low IOP, this is the green line here, reduces the progression of the visual defects. And also, low IOP fluctuation reduces the progression of the visual field defects. So it's better to have your patient with a low IOP and no fluctuation all over the follow-up period to get more stable field changes. And this showed the importance of fluctuation 
as an important aspect of the damaging effect of the IOP. Another point is the risk of cataract formation. The expected five year cumulative probability, probability of cataract formation was significantly increased by the first trabeculectomy. Diabetes and old age were also risk factor for cataract formation. The overall risk of cataract was 78%. Complications, particularly market inflammation and flattened tube chamber, increased this risk to 104% compared to the uncomplicated first trap of 47%. Cataract formation is a side effect of glaucoma surgery and more likely to occur when surgical complications are encountered.